In this lecture, we will discuss the electrical conduction system of the heart. The electrical conduction system of the heart is made up of specialized cells within the heart's walls. Some of these cells have pacemaking functions and others permit the transmission of impulses through them. The main function of the system is to create an electrical impulse and transmit it in an organized manner to the rest of the myocardium. This is an electrical chemical process that creates electrical energy that is captured by the electrodes when we perform an EKG. Normally, normally the electrical conduction starts at the sinus node Node, which is also commonly referred to as the sinoatrial or SA node. The impulse travels through the internodal pathways to the AV node where it then continues to through the bundle of his or his bundle, the right and left bundle branches, and then to the ventricular Purkinje fibers. The ventricular Purkinje fibers directly innervate myocardial cells which then spread by direct cell-to-cell -cell contact with each other. So if you look here, we can see our sinus node, okay? The sinus node or sinoatrial or SA node, you may hear it referred to as. And then we have here our AV node, okay? And connecting, going from our sinus node to our AV node, we have three internodal pathways, an anterior, middle, and posterior pathway, okay? And then coming over to the left side of the heart, left atrium, we have what's known as the Bachmann bundle, okay? So from the SA node to our internodal pathways, we also have the Bachmann bundle that depolarizes the left side, the left atrium. And then we come to our AV node here, okay? This is our AV node. And then after our AV node, we have the his bundle, okay? Or bundle of his. And then from that, we split off into two branches. We have the right bundle branch that innervates the right ventricle. This is our right ventricle. And then we have the left bundle branch that innervates the left ventricle. Okay, and the left ventricle also has two fascicles, we call them, or two branches coming off it that subdivide, and we have both a left anterior fascicle and a left posterior fascicle. Okay, so left anterior and left posterior fascicle. So they would come off this, and we'd have a left anterior and a left posterior. Now, the left posterior one has actually more branches coming off it. Okay, so if we say this is our left posterior fascicle, it will have a lot of these smaller branches coming off. Whereas if we have this left anterior fascicle, okay, it may have just a few. And that's important when you start talking about ischemia and infarction, because that means that this left anterior fascicle that has less branches coming off it is more susceptible to injury, okay? And then from our uh, both the right bundle branch and then these fascicles in the left ventricle, we have our Purkinje fibers. The Purkinje fibers, we said, then innervate our myocardial cells, okay, our cardiomyocytes, which then uh, spread by cell-to-cell -cell, um, depolarization, okay? All right, so you may have heard of pacemaking activity of the heart, okay? And what is that and what's its purpose? Well, the pacemaker dictates the rate at which the heart will cycle through its pumping action to circulate blood throughout the body. It does so in an organized fashion. The pacemaker sets the pace and then all the cells follow at that pace. The sinus node, which is in the right atrium, Here's our sinus node in the upper right atrium, okay? This is our right atrium and this would be our left atrium. Okay, it, the sinus node is the one uh, that normally fills the role of this normal physiologic pacemaker of the heart. The SA node receives input from various areas of the body. So you have the nervous system, the circulatory system, the endocrine system that are all coming and innervating and sending messages or sending different signals into the sinus node. And then the sinus node will respond to the body's need. Now the pacemaker, the normal pacemaker that we talk about with the sinus node, okay, typically goes at a rate between between 60 and 100 beats per minute, okay? And that's in adults. This may be slightly faster in children, but to simplify things, we're gonna use the adult range of 60 to 100 beats per minute. Now, as with other parts of the body, if the SA node fails to fire an electrical impulse, there is a backup or safety net ready to take over. It is important to note that every cell in the conduction system is capable of setting the pace of the heart. However, the intrinsic rate of each cell is slower than those cells that precede it. In other words, the sinus node has the fastest pacing activity, the atrial cells, then the next fastest, the AV node, and so forth, okay? So if you see here, what we're saying is the sinus node is the normal physiological pacemaker of the heart, we're saying, okay? It's getting input. Let's just erase some of this stuff here, clear it up so you can see what we're talking about here, okay? And then from our uh, sinus node, we have those 
pathways. Notice the impulse traveling in these directions to our AV node, okay? And the AV node has a slower intrinsic um, rate, okay? And because the faster rate of the sinus node is between 60 and 100, and let's imagine that of the AV junctions between 40 and 60, this faster one will take over, okay? The general rule is that the fastest pacemaker controls the heart. For instance, if the pacemaker cell were within the AV node and it was firing faster than the sinus node, then that cell would take over a pacemaking function and the rhythm would be originating from the AV node. Hopefully that makes sense, okay? So we're saying if we have a normal rate and say someone's sleeping and normally we have more parasympathetic activity that's innervating the sinus node, so say the rate during sleep falls around 60, but then somehow this AV junction is at its upper range, okay, firing around 60, and if it goes above that of the sinus node, it could take over the pacemaking function, okay? Remember, the general rule is the fastest pacemaker controls the heart, okay? That's important to know. Now, each of these cells with pacemaking function has a set intrinsic rate, okay, that it will automatically fire at. As we mentioned, the fastest one is the sinus node, firing between 60 and 100 beats per minute in adults. The atrial cells firing slightly slower, around 60 beats per minute or a little less than that. Those arise, arising from the AV junction, which typically includes the AV node and bundle of his, have an intrinsic rate between 40 and 60 beats per minute. The bundle branches between 40 and 45 beats per minute and the ventricular Purkinje cells between 20 and 40 beats per minute. As you can see, there's some overlap in these values. Now, some good cutoffs that you should be aware of uh, and that you should probably use is that between 60 and 100 beats per minute are the sinus node and atria. Okay, so if you look here, these are some general rules that I think will help you uh, in just getting an, a basic understanding and they're good rules to know uh, as we move forward. So sinus node and atria between 60 and 100, okay? The AV junction, which we said included the AV node in his bundle, okay? This is the AV junction between 40 and 60, okay? So imagine this 40 and 60, above it 60 and 100 beats per minute, and then below it, the ventricles 20 to 40 beats per minute. Okay, so those are the, the ranges that I think are, you know, important and can help you out as we move forward. Now, as you can already see, having an idea of the rate of the rhythm can give you an idea of where it's originating from, right? If the rate, if we have a normal rhythm in these uh, are coming with, we see a sinus rhythm or a rate around 60 to 100 beats per minute, and the patient's fine not uh, having any issues, it may be coming from above the ventricles, okay? So knowing the rate is important and something that we'll look at how to determine in upcoming lectures. Remember, there are safety nets. So if the sinus node fails, the next area to take over would be an atrial or AV nodal pacemaker. If the AV junctional pacemaker cells fail, then a ventricular pacemaker would take over. Okay, so let's let's just look at those pacemaker or the safety nets that we're talking about here one more time. Remember the sinus node between 60 and 100 beats per minute, okay? And then we said this AV junction between 40 and 60 and the ventricular cells between 20 and 40. And we're saying if our sinus node fails, right? Some people may have a sinus node dysfunction, we call, so it's just not working properly. Okay, the next pacemaker that will, you know, uh, back up or take over may be coming from the AV node, okay? And if there's a problem at the AV node, it may be coming from the His bundle, okay? If there's a problem at the His bundle, then we'll have one coming maybe from the bundle branches and so forth, okay? So as you can see, the th if the things above it fail, then there's al always these backup or safety nets, we call them, uh, to help take over the pacemaking function of the heart. Okay, let's briefly review before we end here. So the electrical conduction system creates a it creates and transmits this organized electrical impulse, right? We said it starts up here normally in the sinus node, right? And then it goes through these internodal pathways to our AV node. We also have this Bachmann bundle to the left side. From our AV node, we have the His bundle. Then we split it into two branches, the right bundle branch that innervates the right ventricle, the left bundle branch that innervates the left ventricle. We have the left anterior and left posterior fascicles. Now, the left posterior fascicles actually innervate the inferior and posterior aspects of the left ventricle, whereas the left anterior fascicle innervates the left 
uh, anterior and superior portions of that left ventricle. Okay, you may hear the left anterior fascicle also referred to as the left anterior superior fascicle. All right, and then from those uh, fascicles and the branches, we get these Purkinje uh, cells or the fibers that then innervate the cardiomyocytes, and then we have the cell to cell depolarization. Okay, so that's the normal conduction system. We said that the pacemaker cell dictates the rate of the heart. Okay, the fastest pacemaker controls the heart, and then we have these backup systems that take over if those above it fail. We have these general intrinsic rates, right? The sinus node and atria is said to know those between 60 and 100 beats per minute, okay? Those below it in the AV junction, meaning the AV node or the His bundle between 40 and 60 beats per minute. And anything in the ventricles, think of a range between 20 and 40 beats per minute. Well, that's the end of this lecture. We discussed the electrical conduction system of the heart. I hope you learned something.